Hey, welcome back to the podcast under your bed, y'all. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm your host, CJ. This is your other host, Taylor. Hey, hope you guys are enjoying spooky season. Yes, <laughs> we are. And uh, in case you're new to the show, uh, we do every show in drag. And... <laughs> No, that's just uh, the theme of the day, because today we are reviewing Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, my and heart. if you don't know it, well, you're starting to get a sense of what's happening here. For so. sure, though, I guess if you're looking at my screen, it's not a good indicator. I, I tried <laughs> my best, but I looked around, and I was like, well, the last time I went to an actual Rocky Horror Show was 100 years ago in my mind, and I did not have anything appropriate, so all I could bring to the table was a spooky season sweater. That is all I have. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, spooky season's welcome on the show, yes. too. So. <laughs> We are all okay with that. Uh, just real quick, if uh, you are new to the show, every episode is going to have a brief uh, spoiler-free review where we tell you a little bit about the show, our favorite things, or some of our least favorite things about it, yeah. and we give you a recommendation uh, with a watch rating it, out of four stars. It. Yeah. yeah. And um, after that, we rip this open, uh, we spread our legs on it, and show you all the dirty... <laughs> oh, God! Oh, my God! <laughs> we spread his legs wide open. Good and, Lord! Uh, and you get you get all the uh, spoilers, and we rip them apart and tell you uh, our, our critique of, of our loves and hates. And to go along with it all, we have a themed cocktail. That is which right. Which we get to. That is right. But... First, let's dive into uh, who helped put this movie together. Uh, Taylor, hook us up. Yeah, so actually, this is like a, a circumstance, which I guess is a bit more common now, but probably less common in the 70s, where you had a stage production that then turned into a movie that then kind of reinvigorated the stage production. And, you know, right. if you know anything about this, this has been running in theaters and... Uh, and stage productions for, I mean, really since since the 70s, all due to the the late night showings. That's really the thing that kicked this off. Uh, if you've never had the pleasure to go and you get an opportunity, I highly, highly recommend seeing this in a theater full of people. It is the best experience. It is such a good time. And I w we won't spoil it here. We'll get into it later of why it's so much fun. But you, you got to find your local like art house theater. Yes. They'll they'll always have showing. Some places do it almost once a month. So mine's doing it uh, next uh, next week, which is awesome. So I'm really excited. All right, make a trip. <laughs> yeah, but um, in terms of like actual production for this, uh, this is really Richard O'Brien's baby. Uh, he plays Riff Raff in the movie. He also was the writer and composer. Uh, for this, which is really awesome. And I, <laughs> I have to say, which is like, I feel like such a 90s baby saying this, but you will know if you're like, who's Richard O'Brien? I know him from Rocky Horror, but what else is he in? <laughs> Spice World. He plays the photographer and he's also in the movie Ever After oh, with no, Drew Barrymore as like, he's a really <laughs> creepy dude in that one. <laughs> but if you're a 90s baby, you know that. Um, so really, he's like <laughs> the brainchild behind the production. But obviously, um, it's really cool. You get some awesome cinematography. Cinematography. Um, I'm going to butcher this so hard. Do you have any guesses, CJ, before I just slaughter this last name? Oh, come on. No, that's Peter Sushitsky. You said Shushitsky. it so confidently. Okay. You said that's it all so it confidently. Shoot. Shushitsky. Yeah, I don't know. one of those awesome things. Awesome cinematography. I think it was fun. <coughs> it felt like uh, it was filmed on a stage in a lot of ways. So there's some interesting things going on there. We, yeah, but he's like a lynch guy, more. which is like the yeah, most so bizarre. Yeah, so he's definitely done some pretty interesting things moving on. Right? Mars Attacks, I thought was hysterical to realize that time. he's the one that shot Mars mm -hmm. Attack. Always a great time. Dead ringers, um, love it. Yeah. Yeah, and then, um, of course, uh, you, you know, all the Lynch movies. Uh, well, a lot of Like, them, so. all of them. It's crazy. And so, like, cast-wise, you want to kick some of that off? You know, I, I thought uh, Tim Curry was great in this. Uh, it's iconic. He, of course, <laughs> he, of course is playing Dr. Frankenfurter, uh, you know, sort of I, main character in the movie, I suppose. But like, hey, rel yeah, relatively. 
Yeah, it's his show. It, I mean, you're right. Regardless of who's actually like a main character who's or the protagonist, protagonist, he is the ste- he's the scene stealer. You're 100 percent right. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, you know, he's he's plays Pennywise in it. Uh, he's in Clue, Home Alone two. A legend. You know him. You love him. And he's the fantastic. movie legend. How about that? And the movie legend. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Susan Sarandon. Sarandon. Sorry, Sar- I always. Okay. That makes me feel better. <laughs> I I always fuck that one up. <laughs> anyway, she plays uh, Janet, and goddamn it, she's in <laughs> Thelma and Louise. Uh, Cloud Atlas yeah. feud. Amazing. Uh, she was so good in yeah, that. She's fantastic. Yeah, gotta love her in Thelma and Louise. But. Um, Barry Bostwick coming to play uh, Brad Majors. This isn't someone I'm super familiar with. Yeah, um, he's like one of those guys I think y- you would recognize. And it's funny because I think now he has a very specific role and look to him that is so different. Than, I'm, well, big surprise, looks different than he did in the 70s. But now he always looks just like a smarmy, like attorney is kind of the vibe he puts out, even though obviously that's really not him. But I think it's kind yeah. of funny. And then, yeah, you get... Richard O'Brien is in this. Uh, Patricia Quinn. You get Lil Nell. Um, I think, honestly, the two, I think, kind of bigger, more known characters or people would be Charles Gray, who plays the criminologist. And he was a fucking Bond villain. Like, and you can tell just based it. on yeah. the way he you presents see, I himself. Know what I, I couldn't place him when I was rewatching it. I was like, God, I know him from something. But yeah, Bond. yeah. You only OG live twice Bond. and diamonds are forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The good stuff. The good Bond movies. Well, don't get me wrong. The Daniel Craig's. Oh, I love that. I know. But, but come on. OG anyways. all the way yeah. for me. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, you got to r- tie the bow on this with Meatloaf. Yeah. I can't, can't have Rocky Horror without Meatloaf. No, um, I mean, uh, my opinion of him may be different uh, yeah, now. Yeah, but, things, <laughs> but, I things mean, have changed. He, but, was, uh, he was fun in this. I, I can't deny that. And another Spice World alum. He was the bus driver. So just for anybody else who's a huge Spice Girls hysterical. fan, this is a good time for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically the movie uh, goes something along the lines of after getting caught with flat tires, a newly engaged couple, Janet and Brad, find themselves at a party that's out of this world and it's full of awesome drag and all kinds of uh oh, yeah. wild antics that ensue in this uh mansion that the uh uh couple finds themselves in so where are we on this taylor what are some of your favorite things happening least favorite things I mean, this is such a bizarre one to try to dissect in a way because, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is not a coherent movie in any capacity. This story is is not really a story in a way. It's almost like a collage of yes. crazy. It's like a bunch of ideas and good songs kind of like meld together to like make something that still doesn't work. But meld is works. like almost generous. Just yeah. kind of like stapled <laughs> On, like, I don't know, and strung together with chicken wire. A hundred percent. But that said, it totally works if you yeah. get if you In an get intentional it, way. When you stand back and squint your eyes, you're like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's part of the fun is I think like the first three times I don't even remember the movie because I was so drunk watching it. <laughs> um, but you're right. I mean, when I describe this movie to friends that are unfamiliar, shame, shame, shame. Uh-huh. I I kind of describe it as like an every genre movie. It's a horror flick, a rom com, a musical, a uh, drama, like LGBTQ. Uh, you know what? Like it's everything in there. It's got. It is, it is everything, a yeah. Rainbow yeah. movie yeah. in every sense of the word. <laughs> uh, it really it's got, is. got a flavor for everybody. Um, and, you know, it really also shows like that the movie came from the stage. Uh, it was adapted from the stage. And, and uh, it really like stayed authentic to that in a lot of ways where it's like a stage like experience on, on, you know, your your screen so oh i fully um, agree you can without a doubt just based even on i think set design and i think the camera definitely 
feels like, hey, we have a chance to actually move, so we're going to do that. Uh, but in terms of everything else with the costumes, it's pretty limited changes throughout a whole film. Um, mm-hmm. Sets are pretty, like you said, it's pretty static. Like, we're staying in this one location, then we're going to move to another, like you would move it through, like, a play setting. Um, right. But it's, there's something just really endearing about it. No, absolutely. I think that's the beauty of this film. It's it's just uh, free from all restraint, uh, and you know, f- uh, it, they really just had a blast making it. There's no way they did not ha- have the time of their lives making this movie. <laughs> and, it definitely doesn't um, look like the, anyone was and, having a bad time. And I don't think you can have a bad time watching this movie. I think you got to just kind of sit down with your wildest friends and just have a party and enjoy the spectacle that is Rocky Horror Picture Show. I agree. I will. And obviously the best way to watch it's at in a live showing. So. No doubt. I mean, if there if you have the opportunity, that is 100 percent the way to do it. I think where I know people who struggle with this movie is times where Maybe I just showed it to two people and that's really not uh, enough to get the party started, especially if you're the only one who knows it. And I have a lot of people who walk away from it being like, I don't get it. And I'm like, you don't have to get it. Like, there's nothing to get in a way. But also, you do have to get it. How confusing was that sentence? But it's true. You have to. You have to embrace not getting it and just enjoy it. And if you can do that, you're going to leave it having a good time. But if you're trying to look for structure or continuity or a story (laughs) or character motivation, you will be left confused and wanting, I think. Yes. Yeah. It's it's really just to uh, it's like a roller coaster that you're going in blindfolded like you have no idea what's (laughs) happening. You just got to go for the ride, accept your fate. And it's all going to. You're going to come out on the other side, uh, a new person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, how do we rate this? Oh, let's go with Monsters Under the Bed. Out of four Monsters Under the Bed, how scary is this? I mean, oh, I think, so we've discussed before that maybe it's unfair to give something a one as everything in some capacity has a scare. That said... Mm-hmm. No, (laughs) it's not. I there's one scene, maybe or two, maybe things I can think of that for people who have no capacity for horror, that might be scary. But even them, I'm like, they'd be fine. Uh, Yeah, there's like a murder scene that's like potentially scary but, but it's honestly it was so just more stylized fun. yeah, yeah that you kind of i thought there was some good little suspense but well it's a do, zero do you have me, a, sell, I'm a zero go. there's just nothing for me here yeah. uh, in terms of scares but how about for you i, I was just gonna say one it's just That's you know kind. it's like <laughs> if anything if anything it's just because uh you're not gonna go show this to your kids. It's like very adult content, That's even though it's accurate. You know, uh, there are boobs. Not scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and very, uh, you know, suggestive scenes. And there isn't much left to suggestion. <laughs> no, not you're but, getting the vibe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so overall ratings of the movie and see this is another heart this is a really hard one for me because as we've noted throughout this is as a film it's not really good in a traditional sense It, it is it's not like um (laughs) <laughs> Again, what we typically look for for criteria of filmmaking, like good cinematography, good editing, good uh, good stories, good acting. Though actually, I would say the acting is good, but um, yeah. there it isn't really meeting a lot of those things that I would judge as a good movie. But the thing that I want to really emphasize is I love this movie. I have such a good time watching this movie. I know every song. Uh, I've seen it on stage. I've seen it in live theater. I watched it just alone like um, for years and years and years and years and years. So I think this sounds like a harsh rating, but I do want to the caveat of like, I love this movie. I just don't think it's a great film just as a film. So I'm going to give it a two. 
Mm, yeah, kind yeah, of harsh. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I I'm in agreement with you. It it's a two out of four uh, for me. Um, just based off of the quality of movie it is. But again, you know, if I'm talking about like how good of a time I have every oh, time, yeah. it's you know four out of four. Totally. But, uh, it's uh, it knows what it's like trying to be. It's not trying to be anything else. It's a hot mess. It's like <laughs> an intentional. It's like an intentional dumpster fire of a movie, and uh, and that's what's so endearing and so fun about it. So, um, agreed. And agreed. that's again, I think, I think it's almost very rare to find like a cult film like this that uh isn't actually like a little bad <laughs> you know like yeah. i think that's what makes it call it's like never gonna be mainstream at by any sense of the word no it is people that in a love weird it. way it, it, it is and it isn't it is such a cultural it's become phenomenon known now for its shock value i suppose or but, just because of the audience engagement um which is just yeah. something that and i think now you get movies like the room which now have a very similar um, audience kind of interaction piece to it. But that just wasn't something that right. really existed before. And that gives it in my book, like also a lot, a lot more love and a lot, you know, like I give it a lot more but credit if, for if that. If you step outside, like the world of film and people who love film. That's true. Like, I, honestly, I don't think there's, are that many people in the general so population know. that like, know the room and know Rocky Horror Glee Picture Show? We did a stinking episode of Rocky Horror, which is like an upsetting sentence because for me to say. Because filmmakers made the movie, you know, and so they they're familiar with the world of film. That's true, but, but I'm just saying it's like it's the fact you have that it's out into the more yeah. mainstream audience. I think, yeah. though, I guess Glee is probably like an old reference to be making at this point, but whatever. Yeah, that's dating us, isn't it? <laughs> well, anyways, I the gist of it is this yeah. is like something that you have to see at least once in your life okay. and uh, know that it's just going to be a wild time and you know have some drinks smoke a little something <laughs> have some, have a great time you know get in that audience it'll change everything yes. about if you're somebody who maybe even watched this and didn't like it i still recommend going to see it in a theater there you go. it'll be a totally different experience yeah, and it'll be a spiritual awakening. Yes, you'll love it after that. <laughs> so stick around. That ends the spoiler-free yep. section of our episode. We got theme cocktail coming up for you, and we're going to rip this movie apart and let you know all of our dirty secrets. <laughs> Some of them. See you after the time. break. Welcome to the podcast Under Your Bed. There'll be drinks, critique, and perhaps a few murders. You're all invited, but once the podcast has begun, there's no way out. The ghosts are waiting, so won't you join me for the podcast under your bed? Ah! Damn it, Janet. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, scream today. Mm. I think it's inappropriately appropriate. <laughs> Totally uh, agree. Totally agree. I guess you're right. In uh, the spirit of Rocky Horror, I'll be Janet. You can I be. Love it. Uh, I'll be. Yeah, I'm Brad, Brad. today. I guess. I actually. Brad. Yeah, you know what? I should have just. You kind of look. I you should have just worn a cardigan. You're I pretty close. That is depressing. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to. That's sad. Uh, <laughs> and I will. I just. I just want to say I have absolutely gone to this movie. I have absolutely fully dressed up. I just, yeah, I'm old and lame now, and I don't have anything anymore. But she threw them all away. She's <laughs> turned a page in her life book. Sad she days. Is Sad days. All right, what are we drinking today, Taylor? Okay, so just want to <laughs> say we had a great plan for this one drink that was like Rocky Horror specifically inspired, and it looked awesome. And then neither of us, like the ingredients, just died. It didn't work out. So we found a fun plan B which is called the Rainbow Paradise Cocktail. I specifically picked it because the layering reminds me of when they're making Rocky and all the colors are being fed yes. in. So we kind of went with a color scheme for this one. Um, this is by hy -Vee, And 
you really do have to layer to make it work. And I'll say, I, I don't, I don't think CJ fared any better. Our layering did not look like the, the picture. I did pretty good. I just didn't have very like equal parts. I don't know how I screwed that up. But yeah, mine's not equal either. Well, unfortunately, all. I drank all the good part of mine. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah. looked like that. Okay, I guess here's the other important thing that I've kind of figured out. If your drink aesthetically is like supposed to look really pretty like this, it is probably not going to be. Um, okay. <laughs> Two sips and it is gone. <laughs> it's um, it is sweeter. There's a lot of sweet components to this one because you've got uh, yeah. pineapple juice, the blue uh, kir kirkow. Is it kirkow? Kirsau. Kirsau. I Shoot. walked in today and I said, "Sir, where can, where's your kirkow?" And he's like, "The kirsau is over there." And I was like, oh, "Got it." Okay. He's like, you pedestrian, you know yeah. nothing. The cast house over there, honey. <laughs> it's like grenadine. So you do have the rum in there, which is nice. But I'll say it is pretty damn mm. sweet. So if you're somebody like myself that needs it a bit more bitter, yeah. a heads up before you make it and layer it, I would put more rum in. It was too late because I had layered yeah. it already. But I would do more rum next time for myself. And if you so like just... Up chasers of grenadine just go ahead top off the bottom with three inches of syrup why not <laughs> it's delicious you know the thing is i don't want to ostracize anybody if you love sweet syrupy drinks that's awesome it's not for me though um so this one it does it does taste good but i would recommend like mid-section up and not <laughs> chipping into the grenadine yeah yeah so that's the cocktail well, that's what it's for it's to look pretty and that's it does what we're here and for. it does it does all right. You're well, up. it's my time for this spoiler, spoiler plot summary. review. Yeah. And uh, Taylor's going to do the background music in this episode. Oh, yes. I'll be singing uh, every song. No. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Rocky Horror Picture Show mm -hmm. plot. We open on a pair of lips and a kick ass song, science Love fiction it. double feature, telling us we are about to meet protagonists Brad and Janet and see them square off against androids, a crazy doctor, and a creature. Ooh. We then officially meet Brad and Janet, who are attending a wedding. Brad proposes to Janet and declares they need to go see the man responsible for their meeting, Professor Everett Scott. Dr. During Scott. this declaration of love, we see the officiants paying close attention. On their way, the narrator explains that a storm and a bum tire will alter their lives forever. Brad and Janet, unable to use their car, head to a castle they just passed on foot, hoping to find a phone. Once at the castle, they're greeted by Riff Raff and Magenta, siblings and workers under Dr. Frankenfurter. They invite the couple in to watch an experiment about to be conducted. Frankenfurter introduces himself in the most fabulous way ever. Really as a does. sweet transvestite from Transylv transsexual Transylvania, <laughs> he tells them he's been making a man with blonde hair with blonde and a tan. Hair and a tan. <laughs> you have to. Additionally, they meet Columbia, another employee and ex-lover of Frankenfurter. Drama. In the lab, Frankenfurter begin brings his creature man Rocky to life. Uh, Rocky disappoints the doctor, though, when he sings a song about not knowing his purpose. The sword of Damocles. <laughs> Frankenfurter is eventually able to calm Rocky when he sings about his muscles. Before there's, the celebration can finally officially commence, Eddie, Frank's former lover, Columbia's current lover, mm -hmm. breaks up the party. For ruining his night, Frank kills him and then proceeds to honeymoon with Rocky. That evening... That evening, both Janet and Brad are seduced by Frankenfurter, while Rocky is accosted by Riff Raff and attacked by dogs on the grounds. Janet, realizing Brad has cheated on her, takes comfort and some other things in, <laughs> and some other things in Rocky. Later, Dr. Scott arrives at the castle looking for his nephew, Eddie, and things descend into chaos when Janet and Rocky are discovered. The group proceeds to have an awkward dinner where Dr. Scott explains Eddie's troubled past and that he received a letter from Eddie pleading for help. This all culminates in Frank revealing they are snacking on Eddie's remains. <laughs> Janet runs into the arms of Rocky, which enrages Frankenfurter. Using sci-fi shit, he <laughs> then turns back 
Brad, Dr. Janet, <clears throat> it then turns Brad, Dr. Scott, Janet, Columbia, and Rocky into stone figures so he can get them ready for a floor show. During this, both Magenta and Riff Raff express a desire to give all of this up and return to Transylvania. The opening number sees our group Demedusa, 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 untamed thing but the show is stopped by the arrival of magenta and riffraff now sporting sci-fi garb they love riffraff that. states he is taking over as commander frank is now a prisoner and they are heading back to transylvania frank agrees it's time to go home and sings a closing number <laughs> riffraff then produces a laser gun and tells frank and Furter that only he and magenta will be returning mm -hmm. panic ensues and frank rocky and columbia are killed mm. The two beam the house back to planet Transylvania. Leaving transsexual. Brad, Janet, and Dr. Sc oh, you're right. Back to planet Transsexual. Mm. Leaving Brad, Janet, and Dr. Scott behind and worse for wear. Credits roll on a science fiction double feature reprise. I just want to say it took all the strength of my life to not sing every time I heard a what? musical reference. I was like, oh, oh. Every single time, which I think should tell you how much fun the songs are. I love, I feel like... Just keep singing and you're going to enjoy the movie. Yeah, honestly, I'm trying to think if there's a song even that I don't like, and I don't really think there's one. Well, they're just all fun, like, sing-along, like, stage pieces, you know? Like, what's not to like about it? For sure. Actually, uh, just a fun thing before I get into everything is that there is uh, an additional song that Brad sings in the stage show called Once in a While that I absolutely love and was I didn't know about it because I saw the movie before I ever saw the right. stage show. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, what a bummer. But I totally get why they cut it. It makes sense. But it's a it's a tune. So if you haven't heard that one. It's a, it's really good. I highly recommend check, checking it out. It's really good. Is there anything that makes sense in this movie, though? No. Like, why? <laughs> I feel like you could have slid it in anywhere. It would have made sense. Yeah, yeah, 100. I think it was more for runtime purposes, to be honest, or to keep the action moving, because it's like this song after Brad and Janet have both cheated on each other with Frankenfurter, though. I don't know. Is Janet a bit dodgier for cheating on him twice in one night? Oof. Or does it not matter at that point where you're like, I already cheated on my significant other. Does it even matter? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hers felt pretty, pretty seedy. Uh, <laughs> Hers, I would I call know. it steamy. So I guess we had a different view on that. Yeah, no, but. honestly, they all felt like a little less consensual than I remember the first time watching. I, mean, I don't know. How, I don't uh, know. That was hard because. He's definitely presenting as their significant others. But I will say there's not a, a lot of, there. There's not after like it, they literally make out for like five seconds and they're like, oh, it's Frankenfurter. And then he's like, but hey, hey. And they're like, no, but your okay. legs are okay. so smooth. I mean, he, uh, he has just. All right. We're at Tim Curry. Let's talk to Tim Curry for a few mm, minutes. Tim Curry. He has speaking of banging legs, Tim Curry. How, how, how uh, I am. So jealous of he his makeup is on point. He looks better in a corset than I ever have in my entire existence. Um, so I'm very impressed by that. <laughs> and those heels, I would literally break my neck if I wore those heels. I would be dead. So I just have to say <clears throat> that's a good point. In terms and of he's a like, look, he's chasing like yes, he's running motorcycles around and like chasing Rocky all over the place. He and, looks uh, smoking in this movie. He's on point. <laughs> he is, and I just like, I mean, we said it at the beginning. He is such a presence in this movie. He, not only is his voice great, his voice sounds excellent. I think he's probably right. one of the stronger out of anybody in this movie. But he's so 
fucking charismatic in this. It's unreal. Yeah, it's just his range in it is just huge. It's just like he's way up here and then way down here. Yeah, um, and, good point. And it's really, really fun. Um, and yeah, you can't take your eyes off him. It's no. Like a, car crash <laughs> no which is insane because you've got like susan sarandon in just a bra and your eyes veer right right every time yeah. every yeah, and time Rocky running around in a yeah a little little skimpy and swimsuit i'm still going to tim every time <laughs> oh that's perfect so <laughs> i i think when you talk about the movie rocky horror picture show you have to kind of see it through like the lens of like uh, you know, a stage production. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you definitely are going to find that in this movie, like with set design, cinematography, lighting, wardrobe. Um, did, you know, I, I thought uh, it was fun, but it had its like limitations. Right. And and I think it's part of like where we're coming at with this like two star rating. For sure. Gave it. Um, you know, I think, it, like, for camera, at least, uh, almost the whole damn movie is, like, a wide shot. And, you know, they're, like, it's at least almost all shot on a wide angle lens. I don't think there's ever any other, like, lens swaps. Maybe I'm wrong on you that. You would but... know way better than me. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> it a million so, times that I couldn't You know, it's like, at, at times they are getting playful with, like, really high shots and some canted shots. And, and then they're, like, getting handheld, like on the motorcycle at times oh, and a yeah, lot of that was fun yeah a lot of pov stuff and breaking the fourth wall at times um mm, so they mm -hmm. they just like they didn't have any rules for them uh but really the moments that i enjoyed like cinematically are actually because of it kind of being like stage brought to screen where like the scene we were just talking about where uh Dr. Frankenfurt comes into Brad and, uh, why am I saying Janet, Susan? Brad Janet's, and Janet. uh, um, rooms where it's like, you know, it's a static shot, but like, you can totally see this happening on stage, right? Where oh, yeah. they, it's, it's backlit. So it's silhouette and, um, and also, you just see it all through, it, through, so yeah, you see it through like this simple. silk screen. Yeah. But and that's, that's fun. the great thing of it. Like, that stuff should happen more in film uh and and doesn't where you know just because you have a different like uh lens coming from stage uh that you view the movie through you're kind of doing things that are a little more atypical and and that was kind of fun in a lot of ways to see like alternatives to how a scene could be shot for sure i think it's really funny to come off of halloween ends and into this because <laughs> like if we're talking that is about the most contrasting that's a little whiplash <laughs> yeah for it, our audience it's perhaps. so i mean like if you watch a, like i again i think the thing we said about halloween ends is regardless of what you think about the movie, if it's a mess, it's whatever, is that the editing and the cinematography are very sp are very spot on. They're very tight. Very cinematic, This yeah. is the opposite of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Complete opposite of that. Um, but it never... The weird thing is, when I typically see, like, anything <laughs> like this, I don't love it. I find it distracting. But in this case, I don't know if it's because there's songs going on. I don't know if because the camera just keeps moving that you're you're just kind of moving along with it. I never found it distracting, even though I think changing POV shots and changing fourth wall shots, typically in a film, I would be like, ugh, I hate it. Yeah, but it's when those moments happen in this, it is intentional and it, it's very part of the like almost cliche of the the moment like they're <laughs> leaning into the like absurdity of it right like yeah like our uh charles gray character oh my god like narrating yes. with with the cigar and the globe you know like classic like <clears throat> bbc type of yes. like opening narration yes. or something and um so that that sort of stuff is just really fun and you will not see that anywhere else outside of like stage productions you know like no it's uh, so uh, much fun yeah otherwise it might be like a voiceover or something you know like house on house on haunted hill type of thing yeah right? oh which but just love that so much i yeah. love vincent price um but yeah i i don't it it is 
the, actually, you hit on a really good, um, what a bizarre thing to have this narrator and cut to the narrator. And then, especially during time warp, when all of a sudden he gets up and does the dance and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and you're definitely saying that phrase quite a few times through the movie. <laughs> you know, like, like I, I think when there's like the whole like swim number at the end, followed by, you know, straight aliens that reveal that everyone's aliens, and you're just blasting off into space. It was like, well, at this point, like, why, why didn't I see this coming? You know, no, like, <laughs> and how how weird is that entire actually last sequence of it is this like RKO production thing, and then it's got this King Kong vibe like going oh, on yeah. with it with Rocky, yeah. which also we're gonna have to get to character motivations, even though it is extremely mm. confusing. Especially, I think Rocky's to me one of the ones where I'm like, what? none of this logistically makes any sense, but okay. Well, let's go there. Uh, who's Rocky? What, what, what I mean, world? Does, okay, he so, is an alien. Well, no, he got made. Transsexual. He got made. Rock, oh, sorry, sorry. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. We're talking Rocky. Yeah, just um, just going starting with Rocky. So I'm just okay. saying, like, just just track this with me and see what, see what okay. you think. So Rocky gets made. He wakes up. He's like, what the F? Then all it takes is a, you're hot. Look at your muscles. And he's like, okay, I'll bang this guy and marry him. That's fine. But then that night, then he gets like, uh, I I don't know if Riff Raff is jealous or what it is, but he gets uh, the dog sick on him. Then he hooks up with Janet and he's into Janet and he's very protective of Janet. But then, then he's a part of the floor show and does probably the worst dancing of anybody in the movie. And then Frankenfurter dies and he's like, this is my love. I'm going to have a King Kong moment. And none of it makes any <laughs> sense. You know what I mean? Oh, what's the syndrome? Help me out here. <laughs> Stockholm. Well, Stockholm. Stockholm. You usually syndrome. need more than like a 12 hour span to qualify well, for that. But it's his master who made him is like his father so you know maybe it's more uh, i wouldn't call it his, i mean there's incest enough in this movie we don't have to <laughs> we don't have to add that one to the list as that's well true. <laughs> uh, but, but i, I feel like that's like surprised. every character in a way but again the fun part at least for me for somebody who watches this is going i don't really care like does that arc (laughs) make any sense does it move him from point a to point z it doesn't at all and it doesn't matter it's another one of those right where like yes i'm in love with uh with Brad. brad and she's the one that's like immediately like let's get the hell out of here this is way freaky (laughs) and then next thing you know she's all like into the dancing she's hooking up with rocky she's like well she hooked up with frankenfurter yeah she's like let's take a little uh action from frankenfurter and then it's just like fuck you brad like um this is a party i want to enjoy it she's had a few elixirs perhaps but (laughs) i do like that i do like that she goes from being like oh i cheated on brad to being like Oh, he cheated on me? That's fine. I got this hot piece yeah. of meat here, so whatever. <laughs> and she's like, okay. don't feel bad about it. Uh, so I, I do love that. And then they still end up together in the end. It doesn't seem to have mattered that much. <laughs> they went through this whole this whole thing. No. Um, <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, one of the other things that I loved in this movie this is also like back to kind of a production thing Mm -hmm. is uh, some of the effects in it are just so hysterical. Um, Like the cheesy bad lightning. Oh, (sighs) I dig that though. It's so great. It's great. It's just fun. It's like, like classical, like old Frankenstein. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, and then, uh, uh, the, the the like I call it the Casper wheelchair, <laughs> you know where where the <laughs> I know exactly the, what the you're professor about. everybody knows right just goes like ripping through the house like with a because of some magnet or something on I the other side. I never of the house. even <laughs> thought about about Casper and now uh, it is all you can't, I'm you're never think gonna about. be able to see. Oh it no no same. no yeah that's all I'm gonna see now. I I love yeah. that, which is just hysterical. I. 
and it's kind of funny to like watch it because I don't entirely know how they did it. Obviously, it was in fast motion, but he's not there wheeling. It's no, like some, no, no, something's no. pulled him. Something some under it. Wire I don't know. removal or yeah, something under. Maybe actually, I think I could remember seeing a part where there's like. You can see, like, a slit in the carpet, and it's, like, being dragged by a cable or something. It's but still pretty fun, though. It's just hysterical and fun and great. Um, yeah, I like the references. <sighs> you know, in hindsight, like, kind of looking back at it as you're talking about, it really does have a lot of elements to a classic movie monster film. Um, yeah, and, and they, very, it really is. Very obviously so. It is, like, the structure of the film, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's like, a Frankenstein type of movie. Um, uh yeah, um, can't be Frankenstein. Oh, the, no, uh, and then of course Meatball's murder I thought was great because of the lack of like seeing the murder and you know it was so simplistic like again a murder on stage like they didn't have to lean into effects they didn't have to spend any money on like special effects no i think there's some graphic. fake blood that trails out after but other than yeah, that you just, it's very you just see stage some, show like you're right you just see some blood and it's an off-screen death um and honestly it was a pretty vicious attack <laughs> oh with a pickaxe yeah or is it just that what comes you call out of that? nowhere i think that's what you call yeah that. yeah a little uh ice pick or pickaxe or something P- ice pick nope you're right it's like <laughs> in a block of ice so you're completely right oh it was a climbing axe is what it was yeah now i remember Oh, was it? Um, mm. I'm pretty I don't sure know it's my axes, axe. people. I yeah. apparently don't Get know. Your shit together. I'm so sorry, but yeah, that one. Um, again, if you're talking about character motivation, is like pretty a pretty confusing one. But I I love the. I love this scene, um, and I love Frankenfurter carrying this bloody axe with his high heels and everything else yes. is like kind of flawless looking and it just has an aesthetic that I really get into. And it's just so distraught. Yes, it's so he's great. exacerbated by the whole thing. It's just like it's but hysterical. a quick recovery because it gets right into another song pretty shortly yeah. after. Like yeah, right and, after. And I think that's kind of where the conversation needs to go is is the songs because the movie is nothing without the musical pieces Uh, it's it is the energy of the movie it is the fun uh and and it's like what sets you up for some of the dramatic moments like like uh, all of a sudden when you're like the music's over and you're in the middle of like brooding brutally murdering someone you know it's like all of a sudden that becomes like shocking because yes. you're just in this fun musical number uh wild, so yeah you're on uh, not wild and untamed things sorry you're in hot patootie and then that yeah. ends very abruptly with that and then you get right into the charles atlas like reprise and it's such a weird you're right it's like this very up song then we're down and quiet and then we swing right back up into another number yeah. Yeah, it is like an acid trip, <laughs> just highs and lows, and uh, yeah. Just so on that essential. note, what is your, what are your? I guess not even necessarily your favorite song, but what are your like top songs? Just out of curiosity, I'll give you my favorite. Ooh, love and it. you're totally gonna disagree, but it's just Don't damn be it, basic. Janet. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, because don't that hate song it. Don't hate that. has so much mileage in my life. I will use that line everywhere. And people will look at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? And for sure, I, I use it with my wife all the time. And she does it back to me all the time, too. Like, oh, I love it. If we fuck something up, it's just like, damn it, Janet. Anytime yes. we say the words, damn, damn it, it. one of us follows it up with, Dan- Janet, <laughs> we it's impossible to say that phrase without uttering Janet afterwards. So <laughs> obsessed, I love yeah. that. Uh, that's the only reason why it's my favorite. Yours. Um. So I mean, it would be impossible, like typically, for me to pick like a single song. But I'll say one that I don't think gets enough credit that I actually really love is over at the Frankenstein place when they're walking in mm. the rain. It's definitely a more subdued song and probably a more traditional sure. musical type song. Right. Um. 
but I really, I really love everyone in that. I think Riff Raff has like that, you know, because he does the time warp stuff, which is fun. But I think that actually highlights his vocal talents more um, mm. than than that does. Uh, that's always just been one of those ones for me where I'm like, people don't give this song enough credit. And I actually love science fiction double feature the opening i love everything sure. about that i love just having the focus on the lips uh i i'm upset it's so simple it's so stupidly simple but i love it and this song is just bizarre uh, <laughs> again i love it um it's weird i think the one i've kind of gotten further away from in time is actually Sweet. probably time Transvestite. Warp. No time. Oh, oh no, okay. no, no, no. Sweet Transvestite will always be it's just too beautiful classic. to me. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, to me, that's like the first song in the movie where, well, I mean, it's the introduction to uh, Tim Curry's character, uh, right? And, yes. And that's when you first really realize what the fuck you're in for. There's some oddities early on, yes, but that's yeah, when you're like, yeah. Oh my God! Here we go. You know the roller coaster has dropped, and and that song just, you know, he <laughs> sweet transvestite. Every fucking minute Ooh. of it, and even Ooh. like the, I love the whisper and the pauses. Like you'll stay for the night, night. Like I love yeah. that. It's yeah. so, again nothing, nothing insanely riveting. We're not getting like a Bernadette Peters style musical. Like your mind is blown. It right. no one's hitting a note that is just truly insane <laughs> but it all really it all really works and i think for the most part people fit in their roles well i think i mean i think okay all right we got a couple <laughs> we got a couple weaker spots i think um susan sarandon is perfect as janet is her voice the best it, it's not uh. especially compared to like tim curry and richard o'brien who clearly like can sing she's not obviously she's not as good uh i don't think there's a, like a lot of debate about that especially if you listen to any of the broadway versions the janets and that do like a lot more vocally mm. um hers is pretty like pitchy but wow i sound like such an asshole right now <laughs> like hearing it like oh, it's too pitchy. pitchy but and this Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> Show. But I would say, I mean, like, I don't know if you agree or don't agree with that, but I, I would say she's probably vocally, just vocally, one of the weaker links. That's fair. I mean, you know, when I watch a movie, like, Tim Curry stands out, but outside of that, it's just, like, a fun ride. I'm not, like, listening for quality vocals, you know, so it, yeah, I guess it that never makes me bothered me. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it's fine. I get it. It is a musical at the end of the day. And even a bad movie, like, let's talk about, you know, the quality of, of like, who can do what. But, um, no, I think it's totally fair game. And you're right. She was probably the one that was lacking when i mean especially when you're side by side but with i love her i fun. love her in in the movie and the acting especially there i wouldn't yeah, want anybody fantastic. else doing that and that's why even i think they did ugh, what was it there was like a minute in time where i want to <clears throat> say it was peacock but it was probably fox or somebody was putting out movie musicals okay. and they were like and okay, I'm obviously showing that I'm a nerd and I love I do love musicals. I that is I think uh, I think that's pretty evident at this point. But um, somebody was putting on musicals and they definitely got people who vocally were like, per, well, actually, that's a little debatable. They <laughs> did Rocky <laughs> Horror um, and they did have I think her name is like Victoria Justice or something. She's like, I don't know. She's a person. She sings. She's obviously <laughs> better than Susan Sarandon at singing, but I was still like no not for me don't like that was it cutting it no because i just i love this movie as is in it unless yeah. i'm seeing it on stage i right. i don't really want to see other people doing it to be honest sure fair Ew. i get it i get it um god i don't know if there's like too much more to get into it's just like you don't watch this movie to like rip it apart like that's the opposite <laughs> no, of its no, no, intentions no. you know yeah um I think a fun one that I'm just kind of kind of want to hear about is uh, first experience or even best experience watching this. What was that for you? Okay, 
All right, so first time I watched this movie was at your house on no! like some holiday when we were kids, like definitely. <laughs> that was the first time oh, I discovered not Rocky Horror. No, definitely not. But it was maybe we skipped scenes or something. But it was definitely my first exposure, and I think why I associate this movie so much with. Our family is a weird movie to say that about. Yeah, but it like, is a, it is. like it, to me, it's like a family like heirloom, like this, like <laughs> this, like secret, like treasure that that our family loves, and we come back to just for shits and giggles. And it like says a lot about who we are as people. I think like just down to have a good time, loud and proud, like fucking, fuck everyone's welcome to the table, <clears throat> and um. Even the dead bodies, and uh, <laughs> and but I would say maybe my like one of the most fun times I had was showing this to my college roommates for the first time. Oh, was yes. a riot because they had never seen it. I was like, "Yo, check this out!" and and we just had a party and watched it, and it was great. And uh, they'll never forgive me, and they love it too. So uh, they're Yay. about it. <laughs> yeah, well, yours, your favorites. Okay, so this is like, um, this is early, um, but I think this is like a funny uh, or just, I don't know, maybe wildly inappropriate thing that I did. <laughs> um, so my friend Travis, who I have known since the second grade, I think we were in, I want to say like middle school, maybe like sixth, seventh grade, something like that. And he was still, we met at a private school, and he, luckily, mm. I was out by that point, but he was still in it. Um, mm. And do you remember these, th These this is so weird, do you remember lock-ins? Do you remember what those were? Yeah, you spend the night at, like, church or school, and, yeah. and you bring your sleeping bag, and you play in the gym, and whatever, you sing kumbaya. You stay up all night, and whatever. Yeah, so eat sugar. He was, he was going to one of those, and he asked, asked if I would come, and I was like, yeah, all right. And, I, again, I'm pretty young at this point, but I decided the best thing that I could do was bring this movie with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so the church people were definitely monitoring kids in a different section, because... <laughs> I showed two different groups of kids this movie over the course of this evening. Oh, and, my God. And, like, I mean, come on. Like, first off, you have, like, um, again, a pretty outdated terminology, but you have, quote, unquote, transvestites. There's yeah. boobs in it. There's a murder yeah. in it. And I'm like, yeah, everybody, it's a good time. <laughs> We're going to watch <laughs> it. So, um I don't know. I probably probably got a lot of. Uh, you were invited to the next lock-in, were you? I was <laughs> not. Uh, weirdly enough, I'm sure some kids went home and were like, "Mom, I saw uh, boobs." <laughs> like, whoops. Oh my god. Whoops. To be in on those phone calls would be great. Yeah, luckily I was not a part of that, so they didn't have my name number, so I got off scot free, Doctor Scott. On that <laughs> I keep one. rubbing <laughs> lipstick all over. How do you ladies wear this shit? Don't ask me. I'm not. Look at my face. I am not the person to be asking about that. Um, I guess before like we kind of wrap up, I think a fun thing would just be to touch on the live theater experience for people who mm. haven't actually gone. Have you gotten to do that? Yeah, I am technically still a virgin. <gasps> no! Yeah, I am. I know. I have been around it, but never actually sat and watched the show. Oh, my I know, God! I know. But, you know, I've watched, like, <clears throat> plenty of it, like, on different YouTubes and... You know, have partaked in like the DVD bonus features Yay. and, and had oh, kind of like the um, hints, right? They give you the yeah, hints as they're coming yeah. out. Yeah, there's a, there's like different stuff, right? Like l little words and shit they, to sing along, and like you know, tell you all the like shit to do. And, yeah. Oh, so, I think that's so cool. And it, I, yeah. you know, what? Now kind, that, kind of like fucked around that. with roommates and. So, yeah, so it is yeah. fun. But. So I guess if you if you don't know or haven't had that experience, the whole thing and why this why Rocky Horror probably has a place that it has is that first off, it started with the late night showings because this movie bombed and was not right. anything for such a long time. But then theater, I think that also this movie saved that theater that kind of started this, if I'm remembering correctly. Don't mm. quote me on that. But uh, anyway, so they start playing this late night. People start getting invested and coming up with like a game to go with this movie. So right. again, this is, if you're familiar, like 
Uh, obviously, if you're not familiar, uh, during certain parts, you have things to do. So when they're doing over at the Frankenstein place, you typically have like a little newspaper over your head and everyone's yeah. squirting, squirting water, water guns, guns up into the air. Um, there's the glove snapping, the cards. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just a whole plethora of items that typically when you go see this in a theater, they give you like a goodie and, bag and you get to and do it. And a bunch it. of stuff to shout out at different times yes. and to sing along along with twin like, is the best sex that's one <laughs> yeah. um the right. brad what did they say for brad janet is i think like whore <laughs> She's like, yeah ouch whore. <laughs> um, um asshole asshole that's what it is for brad there you go um but it is such it's such a like what a fun thing and i love again like back to the kind of back to the room reference is that i love that that's inspired other movies and other audiences to do right. the same thing like what a cool way to get people involved in why it's so much fun and you get to participate in a movie which when do you ever get to do that you know yeah yep absolutely very very rarely if at all <laughs> uh, yeah I, honestly aside from the room i cannot think of anything no that's what i was wondering like i didn't even know the room had like games <laughs> to it like you throw like forks or sporks i think it is like, and stuff. yeah <clears throat> oh my god it's it's so much fun we you know what someday oh, is a Mark. super bonus episode we're gonna have to do that it has nothing to do with anything we just have to <laughs> bonus episode that. i mean it is a horror film like for most uh filmmakers I mean, like, that sex scene, it was a horror the film sex scenes are horrifying a hundred percent it was a horror film for the cast and crew that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, good oh my god hopefully those bastards are getting some royalties out of it they're they're probably pretty happy now. Uh, did, uh, yeah, I think they're doing just fine. They had a book <laughs> off of it and a movie off of that book and the late yeah. night showings. I think they're doing okay. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Well, last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously this has had, as you said, like a pretty long-lasting cultural impact, and that's for a really specific reason, and that's because it's just a damn good time. You're not coming into this movie to see a piece of cinematic excellence uh, compared to like, let's say we covered the haunting earlier. This is the opposite yeah. of that. This is not, um, there's no big uh, takeaways or character dissections or I, theoretically you could do that with anything, but that's not really what this <laughs> is about. It's so much fun. The music is so so good if you ever have a chance to see this uh like a theater production or get to see it at a theater it's an absolute must for me this is probably like one of the first movie musical things i like got i mean i always grew up mm. with musicals but this was really the thing for me that really made me be like i like it musicals <laughs> this can get weird musicals, <laughs> they can be fun yeah it's true it's true like you you talk to most people like oh musicals like especially when we were growing up it was like sound of music les mis, like, cats, yeah, les phantom mis, of the yeah. opera yeah right family opera and and now you know it could be sweeney todd it can be all kinds of book of mormon it can be fucking <laughs> yeah. Weird fucking and Book funny of Mormon, and stupid yeah. and whatever. Yeah, and now you know Hamilton. It's like just all over the place now with uh, styles and and what it can be. So and very much what this movie is too, all over styles. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, genre blending. It this uh, this has a little something for everybody, and uh, it's a great time. So go watch it. Yeah, highly. I don't. You know, it's weird. It does have this correlation with Halloween and. Honestly, I, the bizarre point to me is like just being like, I don't in a way know why, because fundamentally there's like, yeah, it's, it, true. it's not mean, Halloween, but it is. I think because there's <laughs> dress up involved and there's, you know, yeah, that's a good point. The horror elements and murder and monsters and aliens. So I, you know, it's association is because at the core of it, it's a monster movie, right? That is and, very true. You know, you could call uh, Dr. Frankenfurter like the monster of the film, in fact, right? Like, which is almost, uh, you know, in a way, the adaptation from, you know, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's like a uh, queer adaptation of that, and yeah. I think we all love it. We didn't know we needed yeah. it, but we did. <laughs> we did it, yeah. And I'm not sure we got the message the first ten times watching it. <laughs> first hundred but times, Harley, but here we are. It's I mean, right. I guess it should be evident. Frankenfurter, Frankenstein, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dumb, dumb but, brain. Uh, we still have more left uh, this October, so hang One. in there because we ain't completely done one more guys and um we've already announced it so i think it's okay to put on here as well yep this is one of my personal favorite mm. halloween films and you know what's kind of sad is for a long time i was like i'm so cool i know this movie and no one else does <laughs> and now you can find pretty much everything sam related at spirit halloween and i'm not mad about it because i bought like 90 percent of it but, but <laughs> i like, thought i was but so you're no cool. longer a hipster <laughs> no i'm not i'm not it's yeah, I'm not. But this movie is awesome. If you are looking for something to watch on Halloween or this Halloween weekend before we get there, it's an absolute win in my book. Um, obviously, a little I'm already giving you a preview of our next episode, but you got to watch it before Halloween because it's the absolute. It's such a good time. Yes. Yeah. Trick or treat. I watched it on um, the uh, projector outside <gasps> alone. In, in the dock with my back to the woods. <laughs> I am so jealous of you right now. You have no idea. that was. I wish that was my first experience watching it. I'm so jealous. It was <laughs> fantastic. Well, definitely check that one out. I think that's a recommendation from both of us from what I'm gathering. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Check that one out. You will not be disappointed. You'll have a good time. Funny and also a horror movie at the same time, so that's a win. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, guys, like we said, we, we're moving out of our super scheduled uh, season here so if there's anything you want us to cover please go to our socials at pod under your bed twitter facebook instagram or our gmail which is pod under your bed at gmail.com and i think the bonus <laughs> material for this episode is going to be a little uh like dance action from, i think uh, i'm gonna have to get off the call for that one <laughs> <laughs> all right well stick around or don't stick around it's up to you but tune in for our next episode thank you all for tuning in to podcast under your bed bye guys ah!